Anarchism and issues related to love and sex. Major male anarchist thinkers, except Proudhon, generally supported women's equality. Free love advocates sometimes trace their roots back to Josiah Warren and to experimental communities viewed sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression Free love advocates sometimes trace their roots back to Josiah Warren and to experimental communities and viewed sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression of an individual's self-ownership. Free love particularly stressed women's rights. In New York's Greenwich Village, bohemian feminists and socialists advocated self-realization and pleasure for women and also men. Robert Reitzel spoke positively of homosexuality from the beginning of the 1890s in his German language journal Der Arme Teufel. In Europe and North America, the free love movement combined ideas revived from utopian socialism with anarchism and feminism to attack the, hypocri the hypocritical sexual morality of the Victorian era. Emile Armand advocate... Ooh. Emil Armand advocated naturism and polyamory. He also called for forming voluntary associations for purely sexual purposes of heterosexual, homosexual, or bisexual nature, or a combination thereof. Anarcho-feminism was inspired by late 19th and early 20th century authors and theorists such as anarchist feminists Emma Goldman, Voltairine de Clare, and Lucy Parsons. Emil Sitia in Das Curio uh, Curiositaten Kabinett wrote about homosexuality that very many anarchists have this tendency. Homosexuality leads to a healthy sense of egoism for which every anarchist should strive. Daniel Guerin was a leading figure in the French left from the 1930s until his death in 1988. After coming out in 1965, he spoke about the extreme hostility towards homosexuality that permeated the left throughout much of the 20th century. Not so many years ago, to declare oneself a revolutionary and to confess being homosexual were incompatible, Guerin wrote in 1975. In 1954, Graham was widely attacked for his study of the Kinsey reports in which he also detailed the oppression of homosexuals in France. The harshest criticisms came from Marxists who tend seriously to underestimate the form of oppression which is anti-sexual terrorism. I expected it, of course, and I knew that in publishing my book I was running the risk of being attacked by those to whom I feel closest on a political level. The Boston Anarchist Drinking Brigade published in Anarchy, a journal of Desire Armed, number 35, winter 1993, an article titled An, an Anarchist Defense of Pornography criticized anti-porn activists who are frankly censorious. The major male anarchist thinkers, with the exception of Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, strongly supported women's equality. Mikhail Bukhanin, for, in, for example, opposed patriarchy and the way the law subjects women to the absolute domination of the man. He argued that equal rights must belong to men and women so that women can become independent and be free to forge their own way of life. Uh, Bakunin foresaw the full sexual freedom of women and the end of the authoritarian judicial family. Proudhon, on the other hand, viewed the family as the most basic unit of society and, uh, and of his morality, and thought women had the responsibility of fulfilling a traditional role within the family. In Oscar Wilde's The Soul of Man Under Socialism, he passionately advocates for an egalitarian society where wealth is shared by all, while warning of the dangers of authoritarian socialism that could crush individuality. He later commented, I think I am rather more than a socialist. I am something of an anarchist, I believe. Wilde's left libertarian politics were shared by other figures who actively campaigned for homosexual emancipation in the late 19th century, John Henry Mackay and Edward Carpenter. In August 1894, Wilde wrote to his lover, Lord Alfred Douglas, to tell of a dangerous adventure. He had gone out sailing with two lovely boys, Stephen and Alfonso, and they were caught in a storm. We took five hours in an awful gale to come back, and we did not reach pier till 11 o'clock at night, pitch dark all the way, and a fearful sea. All the fishermen were waiting for us, tired, cold, and wet to the skin. The three men immediately flew to the hotel for hot brandy and water. But there was a problem. The law stood in the way. As it was past ten o'clock on a Sunday night, the proprietor could not sell us any brandy or spirits of any kind, so he had to give it to us. The result was not displeasing, but what laws? Wilde finishes the story, both Alfonso and Stephen are now anarchists, I need hardly say. Wait, when it says, so he had to give it to us, what does that mean? 
I don't really understand that. Maybe I'm missing something. Free love and anarchism. United States. An important current within American individualist anarchism is free love. Free love advocates sometimes trace their roots back to Josiah Warren and to experimental communities and views sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression of an individual's self-ownership. Free love particularly stressed women's rights since most sexual laws discriminated against women. For example, marriage laws and anti-birth control measures. The most important American free love journal was Lucifer the Light Bearer, edited by, uh, from 1883 to 1907, edited by Moses Harmon and Lois Weisbroker. But there also existed Ezra Hayward and Angela Hayward's The Word, from 1872 to 1890, and then 1892 to 1893. Also, M.E. Lazarus was an important American individualist anarchist who promoted free love. Free Society was a major anarchist newspaper in the United States at the end of the 19th and beginning of 20th centuries. The publication staunchly advocated free love and women's rights and criticised comstockery, censorship of sexual information, deliberately defying comstockism in an act of civil disobedience the Firebrand published Walt Whitman's A Woman Waits for Me in 1897. A.J. Pope, Abe Isaac, and Henry Addis were quickly arrested and charged with publishing obscene information for the Whitman poem and a letter, It Depends on the Women, signed by A.E.K. The A.E.K. letter presented various hypotheticals of women refusing or assenting to sex with their husbands or lovers and argued that true liberation required education of both sexes, and particularly women. In New York's Greenwich Village, bohemian feminists and socialists advocated self-realization and pleasure for women, and also men, in the here and now, as well as campaigning against the First World War and for other anarchist and socialist causes. They encouraged playing with sexual roles and sexuality, and the openly bisexual radical Edna St. Vincent Millay and the lesbian anarchist Margaret Anderson were prominent among them. The villagers took their inspiration from the mostly anarchist immigrant female workers from the period 1905 to 1915 and the new life socialism of Edward Carpenter, Havelock Ellis and Olive Schreiner. Discussion groups organised by the villagers were frequented by Emma Goldman, among others. Magnus Hirschfeld noted in 1923 that Goldman has campaigned boldly and steadfastly for individual rights, and especially for those deprived of their rights. Thus it came about that she was the first and only woman, indeed the first and only American, to take up the defence of homosexual love before the general public. In fact, prior to Goldman, heterosexual anarchist Robert Reitzel spoke positively of homosexuality from the beginning of the 1890s in his German language journal Der Arme Teufel. In Europe and North America, the free love movement combined ideas revived from utopian socialism with anarchism and feminism to attack the hypocritical sexual morality of the Victorian era and the institutions of marriage and the family that were seen to enslave women. Free lovers advocated voluntary sexual unions with no state interference and affirmed the right to sexual pleasure for both men and women sometimes explicitly supporting the rights of homosexuals and prostitutes. For a few decades, adherence to free love became widespread among European and American anarchists, but these views were opposed at the time by the dominant actors of the left, Marxists and social democrats. Radical feminist and socialist Victoria Woodhull, has, uh, Woodhull was expelled from the International Working Men's Association in 1871 for her involvement in the free love and associated movements. Indeed, with Marx's support, the American branch of the organization was purged of its pacifist, anti-racist and feminist, uh, feminist elements, which were accused of putting too much emphasis on issues unrelated to class struggle and were therefore seen to be incompatible with the scientific socialism of Marx and Engels. French and Spanish individualist anarchist circles had a strong sense of personal libertarianism and experimentation. Free love contents started to have a strong influence in individualist anarchist circles and from there it expanded to the rest of anarchism, also appearing in Spanish individualist anarchist groups. In this sense, the theoretical positions and the vital experiences of French individualism are deeply iconoclastic and scandalous, even within libertarian circles. The call of nudist naturism, the strong defense of birth control methods, the ideas of unions of egoists with the sole justification of sexual practices that will try to put it in practice, not without difficulties, will establish a way of thought and action and will result in a sympathy within some and a strong rejection within others. <clears throat> that was all a quote. Periodicals involved in this movement include uh, L'En de Roe in France and Iniciales and La Revista Blanca in Spain. 
The main propagandist of free love within European individualist anarchism was Emil Armand. He advocated naturism and polyamory, and he came up with the concept of la camaraderie amoureuse. He wrote many propagandist articles on this subject, such as De, De la Liberté Sexuelle, where he advocated not only a vague free love, but also multiple partners, which he called plural love. In the individualist anarchist journal Len Dehors, he and others continued in this way. Amon seized this opportunity to outline his theses reporting sexual, uh, supporting revolutionary sexualism and camaraderie amores that differed from traditional views of the partisans of free love in several respects. Later, Armand submitted that from, from an individualist perspective, nothing was reprehensible about making love, even if one did not have very strong feelings for one's partner. The camaraderie amores thesis, he explained, entails a free contract of association that may be annulled without notice following prior agreement, reached between anarchist individuals of different genders adhering to the necessary standards of sexual hygiene with a view towards protecting the other parties to the contract from certain risks of the amorous experience, such as rejection, rupture, exclusivism, possessiveness, unicity, coquetry, whims, indifference, flirtatiousness, disregard for others, and prostitution. He also published Le Combat contre uh, la Jalousie et le Sexualisme Révolutionnaire, 1926, followed over the years oh God, by Sequenu... Uh, Ce que nous entendons par liberté de la mort, la camaraderie amoureuse ou chienerie uh, sexuelle, and finally, la, la révolution sexuelle et la camaraderie amoureuse, a book of nearly 350 pages comprising most of his writings on sexuality. In a text from 1937, he mentioned among the individualist objectives the practice of forming voluntary associations for purely sexual purposes of heterosexual, homosexual, or bisexual nature. He also supported the right of individuals to change sex and stated his willingness to rehabilitate forbidden pleasures, non-conformist caresses, he was personally inclined towards voyeurism, as well as sodomy. This led him to allocate more and more space to what he called the sexual non-conformists, while excluding physical violence. His militancy also included translating texts from people such as Alexandra Col uh, Kolontai and Wilhelm Reich, and establishments of free love associations which tried to put into practice la camaraderie amoureuse through actual sexual experiences. The prestige in the subject of free love of Oman within anarchist circles was such as to motivate the young Argentinian anarchist America Scarfo to ask Armand in a letter of advice as to how to deal with the relationship she had with notorious Italian anarchist Severino Di Giovanni. Di Giovanni was still married when they began the relationship. The letter was published in Len Dehors on 20th of January 1929 under the title An Experience, together with the reply from E. Armand. Armand replied to Scarfo, Comrade, my opinion matters little in this matter you sent me about what you are doing. Are you or are you not intimately in accord with your personal conception of the anarchist life? If you are, then ignore the comments and insults of others and carry on following your path. No one has the right to judge your way of conducting yourself, even if it were the case that your friend's wife be hostile to these relations. Every woman united to an anarchist or vice versa knows very well that she should not exercise on him or accept from him domination of any kind. <clears throat> The treatment of the issue of love by the influential Italian anarchist Enrico Malatesta deserves attention. Malatesta says in Love and Anarchy, Let's eliminate the exploitation of man by man. Let's fight the brutal pretension of the male who thinks he owns the female. Let's fight religious, social and sexual prejudice. Let's expand education and then we will be happy with reason if there are no more evils than love. In any case, the ones with bad luck in love will procure themselves other pleasures, since it will not happen like today when love and alcohol are the only consolations of the majority of humanity. Anarcho-feminism was inspired by the 19th and early 20th century authors and theorists such as anarchist feminists Emma Goldman, Voltairine de Clare, and Lucy Parsons. In the Spanish Civil War, an anarcho-feminist group, Mujer Libre, Free women led to the Federación Anarquista Ibérica, organized to defend both anarchist and feminist ideas. I just did like a French kind of pronunciation of that word, but it's a Spanish group. The anarcho feminist group Mujeres Libres, Free Women, linked to the Federación Anarquista Ibérica, um, organized to defend both anarchist and feminist ideas, while Sternerist Nietzschean. Uh, Sternerist Nietzschean feminist Federica Montseny held, that the, uh, uh, Montseny held that the emancipation of women would lead to a quicker realization of the social revolution, and that the revolution against sexism would have to come from intellectual and militant future women. According to this Nietzschean concept of Federica Montseny's, women could realize through art and literature the need to revise their own roles. Since the 1860s, anarchism's radical critique of capitalism and the, st and the state <coughs> has been combined with a critique of patriarchy. Anarcho-feminists thus start from the precept that modern society is dominated by men. 
authoritarian traits and values, domination, exploitation, aggression, competition, etc., are integral to hierarchical civilizations and are seen as masculine. In contrast, non-authoritarian non traits and values, cooperation, sharing, compassion, sensitivity, are regarded as feminine and devalued. Anarcho-feminists have thus espoused creation of a non-authoritarian anarchist society. They refer to the creation of society based on cooperation, sharing, mutual aid, etc. as the feminization of society. Although she was hostile to first wave feminism and its suffragist goals, Emma Goldman advocated passionately for the rights of women and is today heralded as a founder of anarcho-feminism. Heralded as a founder of anarcho-feminism, which challenges patriarchy as a hierarchy to be resisted alongside state power and class divisions. <coughs> In 1897, she wrote, "I demand the independence of women. Uh, I demand the independence of woman. Her right to support herself, to live for herself, to love, to love whomever she pleases, or as many as she pleases. I demand freedom for both sexes, freedom of action in love and in motherhood." A nurse by training, Emma Goldman was an early advocate for educating women concerning contraception. Like many contemporary feminists, she saw abortion as a tragic consequence of social conditions and birth control as a positive alternative. Goldman was also an advocate of free love and a strong critic of marriage. She saw early feminists as confined in their scope and bounded by the social forces of Puritanism and capitalism. She wrote, We are in need of unhampered growth out of old traditions and habits. The, women for, uh, the movement for women's emancipation has so far made but the first step in that direction. Goldman, in her essay on the modern school, also dealt with the issue of sex education. She denounced that educators also know the evil and sinister results, sinister results of ignorance in sex matters, yet they have neither understanding nor humanity enough to break down the wall with which Puritism, Puritanism has built around sex. If in childhood both man and woman woman were taught a beautiful comradeship, it would neutralize the oversexed condition of both and would help women's emancipation much more than all the laws upon the statute books and her right to vote. <coughs> Mujeres Libres, uh, Free Women in English, was an anarchist women's organization in Spain that aimed to empower working class women. It was founded in 1936 by Lucia Sanchez Nil, Mercedes, Compa, uh, Mercedes Coma Posida, and Ampere Poch y Gascon, Gascon, and has approximately 30,000 members. The organization was based on the idea of a double struggle for women's liberation and social revolution, and argued that the two objectives were equally important and should be pursued in parallel. In order to gain mutual support, they created networks of women anarchists. Flying daycare centers were set up in support, uh, were set up in efforts to involve more women in union activities. <clears throat> in revolutionary Spain of the 1930s, many anarchist women were angry with what they viewed as persistent sexism amongst anarchist men and their marginalized status within a movement that ostensibly sought to abolish domination and hierarchy. They saw women's problems as inseparable from the social problems of the day. While they shared their compañeros' desire for social revolution, they also pushed for recognition of women's abilities and organized in their communities to achieve that goal. Citing the anarchist assertion that the means of revolutionary struggle must model the desired organization of revolutionary society, they rejected mainstream Spanish anarchism's assertion that women's equality would follow automatically from the social revolution. To prepare women for leadership roles in the anarchist movement, <coughs> They organized schools, women-only social groups, and a woman-only newspaper so that women could gain self-esteem and confidence in their abilities and network with one another to develop their political consciousness. Lucia Sanchez Sayonel was a main founder of the Spanish anarcho-feminist federation Mujeres Libres, which was open, who was open about her lesbianism. At a, at a young age, she began writing poetry and associated herself with the emerging ultra-its literary, literary movement. By 1919, she had been published in a variety of journals, including Los Quiotes, Tableros, Plural, Manancial, and La Gacheta Literaria. Working under a male pen name, she was able to explore lesbian themes at a time when homosexuality was criminalized and subject to censorship and punishment. Dis dissatisfied with the chauvinistic prejudices of, of February... Uh, Dissatisfied with the chauvinistic prejudices of fellow Republicans, Lucia Sanchez Saonil joined with two compañeras, Mercedes Comaposida and Amparo Poch y Gascon, to form Mujeres Libres in 1936. Mujeres Libres was an autonomous anarchist organization for women committed to a double struggle of women's liberation and social revolution. Lucia and other free women, free women rejected the, the dominant view that gender equality would emerge naturally from a classless society. As the Spanish Civil War exploded, Mujeres Libres quickly grew to 30,000 members, organizing women's social spaces, spaces schools, newspaper and, newspapers, and daycare programs. <coughs> <coughs> Anarch 
Anarchism's foregrounding of individual freedoms made for a natural marriage with homosexuality in the eyes of many, both inside and outside of the anarchist movement. Emil Sitia in Das Curiosities in Cabinet wrote about homosexuality that very many anarchists have this tendency. Thus I found in Paris a Hungarian anarchist, Alexander Somi, who founded a homosexual anarchist group on the basis of this idea. His view is confirmed by Magnus Hirschfeld in his 1944, uh, 1914 book, Die Homosexualität des Mannes und des Weibes. In the ranks of a relatively small party, the anarchist, it seemed to me as if proportionately more homosexuals and effeminates are found in others found than in others. Italian anarchist Luigi Bertoni, whom Sitia also believed to be homosexual, observed that anarchists demand freedom in everything, thus also in sexuality. Homosexuality leads to a healthy sense of egoism for which every anarchist should strive. Anarcho-syndicalist writer uh, uh, Ulrich Linzer wrote about a sharply outlined figure of the Berlin individualist anarcho anarchist cultural scene around 900, the precocious Johannes Holtzmann, known as Senna Hoy. An adherent of free love, Hoy celebrated homosexuality as a champion of culture and engaged in the struggle against Paragraph 175. The young Hoy, born in 1882, published these views in his weekly magazine, Kampf, from 1904, which reached a circulation of 10,000 the following year. German anarchist psychotherapist Otto Gross also wrote extensively about same-sex sexuality in both men and women and argued against its discrimination. In the 1920s and 1930s, French individualist anarchist publisher Emile Armand campaigned for acceptance of free love, including homosexuality, in his journal Leon Dors. <coughs> God, so dry. From 1906, the writings and theories of John Henry Mackay had a significant influence on Adolf Brand's organisation Gemeinschaft der Eigenen. The individualist anarchist Adolf Brand was originally a member of Hirschfeld's scientific humanitarian community but formed a breakaway group. Brand and his colleagues known as Gemeinschaft der Eigenen were heavily influenced by homosexual anarchist John Henry Mackay. They were opposed to Hirschfeld's medical characterisation of homosexuality as the domain of an intermediate sex and disdained the Jewish Hirschfeld. Ewald Czech, another homosexual anarchist writer of the era, regularly contributed to Adolf Brand's journal Der Eigener and wrote in 1925 that Hirschfeld's scientific hum humanitarian community committee was a danger to the German people, caricaturing Hirschfeld as Dr. Feld Hirsch. Der Eigener was the first gay journal in the world, published from 1896 to 1932 by Adolf Brand in Berlin. Brand contributed many poems and articles himself. Other contributors included Benedict Friedlander, Hans Heinz Ewers, Erich Musam, Kurt Hiller, Ernst Burkhard, John Henry Mackay, Theodore Lessing, Klaus Mann, and Thomas Mann, as well as artists Wil Wilhelm von Glöden, Fidus, and Sascha Schneider. The journal may have had an average of around 1,500 subscribers per issue during its run, but the exact numbers are uncertain. After the rise to power by the Nazis, Brand became a victim of persecution and had his journal closed. Despite these supportive stances, the anarchist movement of the time certainly wasn't free of homophobia. An editorial in an influential Spanish anarchist journal from 1935 argued that an anarchist shouldn't even associate with homosexuals, let alone be one. If you are an anarchist, that means you are morally upright. <laughs> you are more morally upright and physically strong than the average man. And he who likes inverts is no real man and is therefore no real anarchist. Fucking stupid. <clears throat> The writings of the French bisexual anarchist Daniel Guerin offer an insight into the tension sexual minor minorities among the left have often felt. He was a leading figure in the French left from the 1930s until his death in 1988. After coming out in 1965, he spoke about the extreme hostility towards homosexuality that permeated the left throughout much of the 20th century. Not so many years ago, to declare oneself a revolutionary and to confess being homosexual were incompatible, Guerin wrote in 1975. In 1954, Guerin was, attacked, was widely attacked for his study of the Kinsey reports in which he also detailed the oppression of homosexuals in France. I've, it's happened previously, it's like it's a copy of the, something that has already been written. From the 1950s, Guerin moved away from Marxism-Leninism and moved towards a synthesis of anarchism and, and communism, <coughs> which allowed for individualism while rejecting capitalism. Guerin was involved in the uprising of May 1968 and was a part of the French gay liberation movement that emerged after the events. Decades later, Frédéric Martel described Guerin as the grandfather of the French homosexual movement. British anarcho-pacifist Alex Comfort gained notoriety for writing the bestseller sex manual The Joy of Sex in 1972 in the context of the sexual revolution. 
queer fist appeared in New York City and identifies itself as an anti-assimilationist, anti-capitalist, anti-authoritarian street action group, came together to provide direct action and a radical queer and trans-identified voice at the Republican National Convention protests. Anarcho-feminism continues in new forms, such as the Bolivian collective Molleras Criando or the Spanish anarcho-feminist squad Escalera Caracola. Contemporary anarcho-feminist writers theorists include Jermaine Guerrero, L. Susan Brown, and eco-feminist Starhawk. The issue of free love has a dedicated treatment in the work of French anarcho-hedonist philosopher Michael Onfray in such works as Theory du corps amoureux pour un érotique solaire and L'invention du plaisir, fragments syrianique. In issue 59 of Organised, the Journalists of Anarchist Federation in Britain and Ireland, there appeared an interview with an anarchist dominatrix. The interviewer asks Mistress Venus, an anarcho-communist, you say your clients worshipped you when you were in your dominatrix role, but you also talk about having power and control over them. How does that role fit with you being an anarchist? To which she replies, domination is a game, the adult's version of what children call playing. It's not real, and for me personally, it does not reflect elements of my personality. I enjoy the sessions as a performer, as an experimenter, and as an exhibitionist. It's the attention that I crave. The thrill of power and control is a novelty in a game, not something that I desire to be present in my real life. I think it is very important in a society based on freedom that people should be able to express themselves and their fetishes and fantasies freely and in a safe environment, providing all parties are consenting, whether those fetishes involve being whipped as a naughty school kid or dressing up as a nurse. The group Anarch Kink has also been in existence. Their goal was to challenge the view within the anarchist movement that BDSM is something weird and to give a safe space for kinky anarchists. That's a bad sentence. The Boston Anarchist Drinking Brigade published in Anarchy, a journal of desire armed, number 35, winter 1993, an article titled An Anarchist Defense of Pornography. In it, they manifest, this is a long quote, more objectionable to anarchists are the anti-porn activists who are frankly censorious. While sharing the views of anti-porners who seek to protect others from porn, these people go a step further and use coercive force to achieve their ends. This is totally incompatible with the kind of voluntary society sought by most anarchists and should be denounced by all freedom lovers. Pornography, like any other form of entertainment, can be good or bad based on the individual merits of any particular work. However, as a genre of literature or film, it is no better or worse or good or evil than any other. <coughs> If porn is bad or sexist, the best strategy is to criticize it and discuss it with others, and or make good, non-sexist porn, not suppress it. Sex and its depiction are a source of pleasure for many, and our freedom to indulge in both should be defended, or at least tolerated, by anarchists. Censors, including those who claim to be anarchists, are the enemies of freedom, and anarchists who support them call into question their commitment to a free society. Chuck Munson, the person behind Infoshop.org and several other anarchist projects, has also defended the right to distribute and receive pornography based on the principle of freedom of speech. Nevertheless, the issue has caused some tensions within the anarchist movement. During a Congress, a large anarchist event in Germany at the workshop titled Anarchy and Sex, some members of Fuck for Forest took off their clothes to demonstrate the freedom of being naked. Two-thirds of people at that event have shown support for FFF members' expression. Some women have been uncomfortable at seeing nude people at the event, and that resulted in a verbal altercation during which one FFF member may have said something sexist, although evidence points to the contrary. On the following day, Fuck for Forest members were refused entry to the Congress, and when they voiced their opposition to that decision, the Congress organizers chose to shut the whole project down. Anarchists in high heels are anarchists, or sometimes radicals or libertarians, who work in the sex industry. The term can be found the term can be found being used in XXX, A Woman's Right to Pornography by Wendy McElroy, where porn actress Veronica Hart makes this comment upon hearing the word feminist. I don't need Andrea Dworkin to tell me what to think or how to behave, and I don't appreciate being called psychologically damaged. I have friends in the business who call themselves anarchists in high heels. They'd love to have a word with her. Wow, that was a long one.